Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week we're going to take a look at a tricky little bass riff from the song Dead Goon by Mr Bungle, played by Trevor Dunn. Trevor was actually featured here on the channel just a few weeks ago in an interview for the Talking Bass podcast. So if you've not seen it yet and you're a fan of Trevor Dunn and Mr Bungle, I've linked to the video in the info below. As always, the lesson material including the drum tracks can be found over at the Talking Bass website. Just click on the link in the info below to play along. Then, while you're there, sign up for free to join the Talking Bass community and gain access to a whole social network and practice area for bass players. You can connect with over 100,000 players that are currently signed up, mix in the forums and groups, take part in upcoming community challenges, download any of the free ebooks like the Scale Reference Manual, try out the 25 Bass Riff Challenges, and much, much more. It's all free, so just go and sign up today. Okay, so the riff we're looking at today from Dead Goon features a few technical hurdles involving both the fretting hand and the picking hand. So first, let's have a listen at the original tempo of 115 beats per minute. <laughs> Okay. So first let's work through the notes in there. So we begin with this line. Okay, so it's a little octave pattern. So uh, we start on a C sharp octave there, sixth fret of the G string down to fourth fret on the A string. So it's descending, G string, A string. Then we take the whole thing down to C, so we just take it all down a half step. Okay, so fifth fret G string, third fret A string. And we play that uh, that bottom C there at the third fret of the A string. We play that twice. And then we play the B at the fourth fret of the G string. So we've got this descending chromatic line. Okay, so you just try that in isolation. Okay, and I will cover the little uh, technical hurdles that you're going to have in a minute. The next part of the line sounds like this. Okay, so it sounds like a little bit of a weird chromatic line there, although it's not as weird as it first appears, as I'll talk about in a minute. So we start on a D, fifth fret of the A string, and then move up to the uh, A sharp or B flat at the eighth fret of the D string. So that minus six, first of all. Then we have a little tritone pattern there from the E flat up to the A or uh, D sharp. So sixth fret of the A string up to seventh fret on the D string. So minus six, and then and we play a tritone, if you're thinking intervallically. Okay, then we come down on the same fret, down to the uh, uh, down to the E at the seventh fret of the of the A string. So just think up a fret and then down on that perfect fourth. Then we have this descending minor third from the G sharp down or A flat down to the F. Okay, so this is sixth fret of the D string down to the eighth fret on the A string. And that's the whole of that part of the line, so... Okay, so, sounds incredibly chromatic and dissonant, you know, as if it doesn't make any sense, but like I say, I will talk about that in a minute. And for the final part of the riff, we have the following. Okay, so, in terms of the notes, we've got F sharp up to G, 9th fret to the 10th fret on the A string, which we play as a hammer-on, so we pick the first note and then hammer-on. And then the rest of the notes are picked, so we have... Then F sharp, down to the F, and back to the F sharp. Okay, so that's 9th fret, 8th fret, 9th fret. So a nice little turn on the F sharp. Okay, and that's the whole of the riff. So, very slowly from the beginning. Okay, and that's the whole thing. Okay, so the first thing to be aware of is where we're coming in with the riff, the rhythm there. So we're actually in 2-2 two, two here, in cut common time. And if you've never heard of cut common time, well, it's basically a half time kind of 4-4. Uh, four, four. So if you were to think of 4-4 four, four as being 1-2-3-4-1-2-3-4 at this fast tempo, 2-2 two, two is counted 1-2. Two, one, two. Two, two is very much used for marches and Latin music when you've got that halftime kind of count or halftime pulse with that faster quarter note uh, beat. So, um, if I was to count this in, one, two, one, two, one. 
Okay, so it's actually coming in on the and of beat one in that sense. So one and two and one and Okay, so that's where it's coming in. Now, if you were counting in 4-4, four, four, at the double time speed, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's actually coming in on beat 2. But I would think of this more as 2-2. Two, two. So it's good practice in that sense anyway. You're getting used to playing in 2-2. Two, two. Next, we have an odd little move in the picking hand as we play these opening octave patterns. So usually when you play an octave pattern, like that, you're going to be playing the lower note with the first finger and then the higher note with the second finger, the middle finger. That's how it naturally, that's what naturally feels right because the second finger is longer. Now, if you were to try the other way around, just try that with a, you know, with an octave pattern, try playing the first note, the, the lower note with the uh, middle finger, you know, to the first finger and it, it just feels really, really odd. So when we play this line, everything's fine at first, second finger, first finger, but because we play two notes on that low C there, when we come back up for the B, we actually have to play it with the first finger. So that's a move that you might not be used to so much. You, know, you just gotta get used to coming up and over with that first finger. Now the hardest part here for most people will be this little chromatic line. Okay? Now, this line might look like a really weird finger exercise, which I suppose it is, but from a melodic standpoint, it's actually not that weird. It's just a really cool approach to the F sharp from both above and below. So we split it between two voices. So the two lines here are actually, so we're coming down from this, from this A sharp, A sharp, A natural, G sharp, and down to the F sharp. Nothing weird about that. And also coming up from the D chromatically up to the F sharp. Okay, so both lines on their own sound pretty normal. They're just chromatic approaches to that F sharp. But when you put them both together, when you blend them and you split it between the two voices, so we create essentially two lines. Start with the D up to the A sharp, it instantly gives us that minus six, which just sounds, you know, quite dissonant, melodically. So we've got the D, and then, so we, the starting note of both, of both lines, the D and the A sharp, then we drop down for the, uh, for the D sharp, which is, which is just the next note in that low line, and of course then the next note down from that top line is that A natural, which gives us this tritone. Then when we come back down, we get that perfect fourth, so, and then the minor third at the end. Okay, so it's just, those two lines just split, you know, alternating between those two voices. And we end on the F sharp. Now, in playing this line, you really need to pay attention to the fingering. So, the fingering I'm using here, I'm starting with the first finger, the index finger for that D, and then, obviously, the pinky, the fourth finger for the uh, for the A sharp. That's all pretty self-explanatory. Then I'm actually going to use the first finger again, the, uh, the index finger for the, uh, for the D sharp there, or E flat. So, I'm shifting up. And then I'm using joint barring with that second finger rocking there on that joint for the perfect fourth which leaves me in position to play the minor third final uh, minor third there with the first and third fingers and then I just jump up now you could just stay in position and play it, you know, with a one finger per fret kind of system. So, uh, first finger, fourth finger, second finger, third finger for the bar, and then second finger and fourth finger for the minor third. If you want a really tough uh, finger exercise, you could try it like that, but it makes a lot more sense to actually shift up with the first finger. For the final part of the riff, we have this little turn. Now the original line has a hammer on for the first two notes and then it's all picked from that point on. Of course, there are a ton of other ways you could play it. You could pick every note. You could pick it all legato, uh, play it all legato. But on the original, you can definitely hear the smooth hammer on for the first move and then the more aggressive picking afterwards. 
okay? So once you have the riff under your fingers, obviously start out very slow, focusing on clean technique. Then eventually you can try practicing to the supplied drum tracks. Now I've sequenced three tracks at 95, 105 and 115 beats per minute. So you can slowly build up your speed. So let's just have a listen to it away from the tracks, just very slowly. So one and two and one. <laughs> So that's the speed you want to play it at. Now, when it, after playing that riff, if you listen to the original, not every time, but most of the time, it actually plays a little slide, uh, just leading into the next, uh, next bar. So we have, again, so one and two and one. One. So now let's try it with the practice tracks and we'll start at 95 beats per minute. Let's try a little quicker at 105 beats per minute. Okay. And finally, let's try full speed at 115 beats per minute. Okay. okay, so that's Dead Goon. Please like, comment and subscribe to the channel, then go check out the Talking Bass membership to gain access to a complete social network of over 100,000 bass players and a ton of practice resources and downloads. Okay? I'll see you next week.